Hello students, this is Dr. S Dr. Davidson and I want to go over um, the um, lesson planning assistant, especially the area regarding the content objectives um, because things have changed a bit since the first video that um, you've looked at in this series. And what has changed is the introduction of the Common Core. So I'm in the um, lesson planning assistant and what I want to do is I want to find my standard and then I want to create my content objective. So let's go to the standards. Now when we go to the standards you are going to see this being offered to you. Let me bring this out. So there's the California content standards, the California English language development standards, technology standards, and common core standards. At this point, I am not interested in you, um, if there's no need for you to address the technology standards. What I do want to do, though, is focus in on these three standards. Every single one of your lessons must have an ELD standard. Now, if you are a Term 1A student and you are listening to this early in your um, in in your your coursework with um, Cal State Teach, you do not have to put an English language development standard into your le lesson planning. You will have to do that when you hit Term One B, but right now you do not have to. All Term Ones and beyond are required to have an English language development standard in their lesson plans. The California Academic Content Standards. Now these standards are not yet um, sunsetted, however some of them are. So when, if you are doing English language arts or math and soon science, you will only use the California uh, Common Core Standards. If you are doing social studies or PE or any of the other uh, content areas, you will continue to come to the California Academic Content Standards. Um, so let's look at the Common Core Standards first for English and Mathematics. In English, you will find embedded in the content standard, not only is there English, but social science is also part of the California content standard in that. When you ask social science students to do something, if you're doing a social studies lesson, you have to, let's say they have to read or they have to write or they have to speak, you have to base that on what the content level is for that grade level in English language arts. In other words, you cannot teach um, social studies without teaching English language arts because both of them are humanities. Um, and I say this so that you will not ask students to do something in social studies that is below or above grade level. So to look at the California content standards, let's just say we decide we're going to do um, foundational skills. So we open up the standard and it says phonics and word recognition and fluency. We still open this up and then we find they only offer one here. So we're just going to go ahead and click one thing that this student is going to be focused on in this lesson. I caution you not to clutter up your lesson plans with too many standards in any given content area. And the reason is, if you put a standard into the lesson plan, you have to address that standard in the lesson, lesson plan. Think of it as a, as a gun that's introduced in a movie or a book. If you introduce the gun on page one, somewhere before the end of that book that gun has to be fired and if it's not then you have not you, you leave your reader hanging well the same thing happens when you're doing standards if you do not address the standard in the lesson plan then this then the lesson plan is considered incomplete now do you have to do every single solitary part of a standard in any one given lesson no you can do one part of the standard, such as decoding words with common Latin suffixes, or you can do another part, which is know and apply grade level phonics and word analysis. That's your choice. I caution you that a lesson 
right now is around 10 to no more than 20 minutes long. For most lessons, for most students, are really chunked at about 10 minutes where they have direct instruction, you are modeling the lesson, you are checking for understanding from your students, you ask your students to demonstrate their understanding, and then you move to the next chunk of the lesson. So that's the first part. You want to add that standard if you're doing English language arts. Now, if you are beyond, um, if you're in term 1B, you're not finished yet. You still have to go back to the standards, and now you have to go to English language development. You click on your English language development if it's reading, writing, listening, or speaking. Um, so since we're reading, I'm just going to click on reading right now. It's third grade. We're doing um, fluency and word development for an intermediate level student. Let me move this over. Uh, excuse me for an intermediate level student and we are going to have the students do decoding and it says that they're going to recognize common roots. Well that's going to be perfect if we're looking at analyzing Latin roots and words. So we're going to click that and we're going to add that to the lesson plan. So now I have my common core for English and I have my English language development. If this were also a social studies lesson I would now have to come here. I'm not going to do anything here. I'm going to go to social studies. I'm not going to do anything here because these two are common core. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to look at social studies, English language arts history for third grade. In the third grade, I see that they're doing continuity and change. I open this up to see, well, what are they doing? I pick whatever it is they're going to be doing. I click that one. So if this was a social studies lesson, I would see those three things in this lesson. I'm not going to choose a social studies lesson right now. I'm going to go back to the lesson planning assistant. So now I see that I have an English language, um, English language arts lesson and I have an ELD lesson. I'm done editing. I've added the standards. So now I'm going to close this. Now I have to write a content objective. I want to teach you something that's very important. Every standard has three parts. There's a verb, there's a noun associated directly with that verb, and then there's the context in which the noun and the verb are linked together. So in this case, the verb here is recognize. That's the skill students are going to be able to exhibit. What are they going to recognize? Root words, all right? So your students are going to recognize roots, root words. That's part of writing the objective. Now, what kind of root words? Well, for this, I want them to recognize common root words, and so I know which ones they are because they would be in my lesson plan. So I would maybe have, um, graph and able and things like that for whatever the root words are right now I can't think of any so that I would know that I'm going to give students given a certain set of vocabulary words like speak and speaker given a certain number of vocabulary words the students will be able to recognize the common root now here for the English language arts the same thing happens know and apply know is something that is non-demonstrative the only way a person can tell you or show you that they know something is for them to do something so here you have to determine what is the student going to do to demonstrate that they know something. So let's look at this. Know and apply grade level phonics and word analysis skills in decoding words with both an isolation, uh, both in isolation and in text. So let's just say I decide to do that. So the students are going to somehow demonstrate that they know what? Grade level phonics. They're going to know phonics and what are they going to be able to do? they're going to apply word analysis in decoding. 
All right. So I'm going to be, I'm going to give them words where in isolation and in text. So given words in text, let's say I decide that the students are going to read something. Given words in text, the students will identify the root word and they will then be able and, and analyze the root of that word as they decode it. So I, the, the reason I want you to know that there's those three parts to every standard, it's those three parts help you to then write the content objective that you are now going to be teaching toward. Once you know what it is the students will know and be able to do, you can then complete the rest of the lesson plan. You can't write a lesson plan unless you know what the journey at the end is going to be. So if you keep that in mind as you continue to write your lessons, and I will be more than happy to go through this again if need be, remember there's always a skill, there's always a noun, there's a verb and a noun, the skill and then the, the, the thing the skill is applied to, the application it's applied to, and then the context in which they are going to demonstrate this skill. So here you have identify and know the meaning, okay? So they're going to identify meaning of what? Common prefixes, okay? What are they going to do here? They're going to decode. What are they going to decode? Words. In what context? Common Latin suffixes. So that tells you, given common Latin suffixes, and you decide what those suffixes are going to be, students will decode the words. Given um, uh, common prefixes, students will identify the meaning and they will demonstrate knowing by explaining what it might be. You have to decide what knowing is going to look like and substitute a measurable word for what knowing and understanding are. Um, you can find those words in, Bloom's, in your Bloom's taxonomy which gives you many levels of thinking and the verbs associated with measurable outcomes of thought in, in academics. So I know this can be very confusing if you're doing this for the first time, but I hope this gives you a little bit of idea of how to go about constructing your um, measurable objectives for your um, students. And finally, just so you'll know, this part here where it says the language objectives, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, that does not mean English language arts. That relates directly to English language development. But that's a whole nother video. And so I just want to get this into your heads now. So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.